Happy Halloween everybody and welcome to episode 16 of the Idle Game Maker course and today I'm gonna give you advice on how to plan out your game. By now the series have covered the basics of Idle Game Maker and soon we'll be picking up pace and learning some more advanced techniques. Planning out your game is extremely crucial both for your game's longevity but also for your sanity. And there are two main ways you can plan out your game and those are by writing down your ideas on a piece of paper or a text file or my favorite method using flowcharts. Let's first talk about the text file method. The goal here is to brainstorm and organize your thoughts before diving into the game development process. And I've already written down the ideas for Coin Mania, the game we will be developing in this course, as you can see here. What I have done is I have created some ideas for the buildings which we can use in our game. Then I have also created some ideas for the upgrades for those buildings. And I also have created upgrade ideas for the clicks. Now I have not specified what the effects of these upgrades will be, but I have done that using the flowchart method which we will take a look at next. Now, after you have your key ideas written down, you can move on to the flowchart method. And as a little side note, this website which I have used to create this flowchart is linked in the description. Now, flowcharts are a visual representation of the game's logic and can help you map out the game's progression and development. And I have mapped out a big part of my game's development plan. As you can see, I planned out my buildings, which can be seen here, as well as a lot of my upgrades as well. Keep in mind, however, that when creating a game, it is simply impossible to plan out everything. There will be roadblocks which you will get stuck at, there will be features which sounded good on paper, but when implemented you find out they don't work for your game and many other problems along the way, and that is completely normal. And this is why you should never attempt to fully plan out your game, because well, it's simply not possible. You should only focus on planning out the key parts which you are mostly sure will not change. For example, balancing the game is a completely separate task that requires extensive playtesting. In other words, when planning out the game's balance, be ready that a lot of the values such as production and costs may change. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, when creating a flowchart for your idle game, consider the following key questions to guide you. The first one is how will my game end? A clear understanding of the game's objective and endpoint is essential. Are there milestones or goals that players need to achieve to win, or does it continue indefinitely? Next one is what is my targeted audience? Is it aimed at casual gamers, strategy enthusiasts, or a niche community? Understanding your audience helps shape the game's mechanics and aesthetics. The next question you should ask is how big is my game's scope? Are you creating a small and simple game, or do you aim for a more complex and feature-rich experience? This decision then impacts your development timeline and resources. Another question you should ask yourself is what will the key features of my game be? You should focus on the core features that will define your game. These could include unique mechanics, upgrades, achievements or any other elements that set your game apart. Another question you should ask is how do I plan to engage the player? Try considering the player's experience and how to keep them engaged. Will there be regular content updates, social features or events that encourage active participation? And the sixth question you should ask yourself is what is the theme of my game? You should decide on the game's theme and storyline if applicable. A consistent and appealing theme can then draw players into your world and create a more immersive experience. Of course, you can ask multiple other questions as well, these are just examples. And while you can branch out any of these questions as far as you like, in this video I mainly focused on how to expand your ideas regarding the key features of your game. And so the way the flowchart works is you ask a key question, then provide an answer which raises even more questions, for which you provide more answers, which then raise even more questions and so on and so forth until you get to the root answers of the key question. Now another important thing to mention is that we'll be using this flowchart which I have created a lot throughout the next episodes where we'll be adding the content inside of it. Now with all of that said, your challenge for this video is to create a flowchart for your game if you are making a game of your own. You can use the same tool I used which produced this kind of result. It's linked in the description, but you can also just search up draw.io. Keep in mind, however, that creating a flowchart sounds easy, but it's actually pretty difficult. However, it is definitely worth your time as it will make your life that much easier. So give it your best shot at creating a flowchart for your game. And with that said, you have reached the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this tutorial useful. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss any future tutorials and check out my Patreon. For only $2 a month, your name can be forever embedded in the outro of my videos, link is in the description. So once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.